Steve Leitner, thanks for staying on. Freedom Park hosted a public lecture to commemorate the Kaito Kanavale battle. The Battle of Kaito Kanavale is seen as a crucial event of the Angolan Civil War and uh, the Southern African Border War, with Oliver Tambo referring to it as the Waterloo of uh, racist South Africa. Joining me now to talk about this is uh, Freedom Park CEO Jane Mofomadi. Jane, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time tonight. Why is this battle considered a, a turning point and quite critical in the history of Southern Africa? Uh, this is a very important uh, battle, Chavo, because uh, the, the end of it or the defeat of basically meant the whole of the southern region. So it was the, the defeat of the Sadaf in this battle that led to the independence of Namibia and the independence of South Africa. So it's a very important battle. And that is why we thought as Freedom Park, we need to commemorate it because that is in line with our mandate also to honor those who died for freedom and humanity. Because there are many people who died during that battle and many others. And we need to always remember this as South Africans. Yeah. What, uh, what do we remember? I mean, talk to us about the, the politics of this battle, just as a starter. Um, you will recall that MK was also based in, uh, in, in Angola. Uh, like many others, uh, uh, the Namibians were there, the Zimbabweans were there, and, and many other communities who were fighting for the liberation of their country. But at the same time, during that time, there was also a civil war in Angola. On the other side of the, the government uh, in Angola and the MK, there were the Cubans and the Russians, among others, who were supporting. And then on the other side of the, the rebels, there were the, the Sadaf that was also causing instability. So the, the idea, and you will recall also, it was at the time where we had what we call the cross-border wars, where Sadaf was going out to, to the countries, particularly in Sadek, where South Africans, MK, uh, and, and other liberation movement formations were, were based to, to destabilize, but also to, to disrespect the sovereignty of those countries. So that battle became the turning point. It was the defeat of Sadaf that made them retreat and also forced them to open for negotiations and discussions for the independence and the freedom of South Africa and that of Namibia. Namibia first, of course, and then South Africa uh, later on. And how does this partnership, or shall I say cooperation, in this particular program also speak to the broader cooperation that um, uh, generally exists between South Africa and Cuba? Uh, you will know that we always have a, a very special relationship, but actually that battle of Kutek in the Valley, amongst others, in terms of the other support that South Africans received from the Cubans, there were over 2,200 Cubans who died in African soil, particularly in Angola, in Kutekin Valley. And what is so special about this relationship is that the, the assistance of the Cubans had no strings attached to South Africans, to Angolans, and to the rest of Africa. What they only took when they left the African soil was the remains or the bodies of their fallen soldiers without any strings attached. And that shows the spirit of solidarity and the internationalist uh, uh, spirit and, and commitment uh, as led by then uh, uh, Fidel Castro. So this makes it special. But we also know that the Cubans have assisted South Africa in many, many other forms. Uh, in terms of the health, there are many doctors here. We also have our own doctors who have been trained in Cuba. So the relationship goes much, much deeper. Cuba is one of the few countries that supported South Africa when it was, I would say, not fashionable to do so because of the, the pressures that even the, the other international uh, powerhouses were against that support of South Africa because many countries who are powerful turned a blind eye and did not necessarily assist South Africa. But the Cubans was one of those few countries that stood up and sacrificed a lot of their resources, a lot of their capital in terms of human resources as well, so that we could be free. Yeah. 
An important announcement was made today by the Minister of Arts and Culture here in South Africa alongside with their uh, Angolan counterpart on the steps that they are now going to take to ensure that this battle is recognized in the history of the continent. Just share with us a little bit more. Yes, um, our minister uh, signed a, a memorandum of agreement with his counterpart in Angola. And one of the, the resolutions or the agreements is that the, the March 23rd will become uh, known as the Day of Reflection. And every year we will commemorate and remember uh, the, the Battle of Peter Kitanzale, not just for South Africa, but for the whole of SADC and eventually the whole of the continent because this is part of the preservation of our resistance and liberation heritage a project that in South Africa, our ministry is leading, but at an AU level, uh, Tanzania is leading that uh, at a continental level. So this is part of the agreement. And part of that agreement also is that Freedom Park will enter into an MOU with the, the Tutek in Valley Memorial and also the Augustino Neto Memorial uh, in Angola. We have already commenced with the agreement. We have already finalized the, the draft MOUs and we are looking at, at implementing that. So today's commemoration and this uh, launch of the first annual commemoration of the Day of Reflection is the first step in implementing that vision as led by our Minister Mtetwa. Yeah. Now, as that MOU comes to its fullest term, what should we expect? What should I expect when I walk into, into Freedom Park? One of the, the uh, uh, things that you will see is that already within Freedom Park, we have honored leaders like Augustino Neto within our gallery of leaders and in the Wall of Names. We, will, we are also busy collecting the names of the Angolans who fought side by side with South Africans in Angola, who also will be inscribed in our wall of names. We have already, as I've indicated, inscribed the names of the Cubans. We have also inscribed the names of the 67 Russian uh, soldiers who also assisted and who also acted on advisory capacity in, in, in Angola. So those are some of the activities, but we, we, you will also see in the next, uh, in the near future, which we started actually just before COVID, the, the cultural seasons which will rotate between Angola and South Africa. Uh, Angola has already hosted South Africa in 2019, where the, the, the South Africans, the, the different sectors in the creative industry, heritage, arts and culture, were there as part of the exchange and learning from each other so that we understand our cultures better, but also through arts and culture and heritage, we promote trade and interaction, the people to people relationships that we are also strengthening. Jane, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. That is the Freedom Park CEO, Jane Mofamadi. They were talking earlier on, of course, around the celebration or the commemoration of the Kaito Kanavari battle, uh, quite significant in the history of Southern Africa. Speaking of